Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. This is episode 2 on the Mark 1 build. So I mentioned in the last episode that I was wanting to tweak the engine position slightly. And the reason I'm doing that is I've got a four branch exhaust manifold that is getting quite close to the chassis at the bottom here. And I'm also in a position where I can make a custom front engine mount. So I want to just tweak the engine position ever so slightly just so that this manifold fits a bit better. And then I can obviously make a front engine mount to suit that. So in order to do that, I am gonna be taking the engine out of the car. And while the engine's out, I'm gonna change the gearbox over because this is not the gearbox that I'm gonna be using. It is still an O2A, but I'm gonna be using one that's sitting in the back of the car instead that has an LSD in it. The other reason I'm gonna swap the box over is because this rear mount for an O2A in a Mark 1 that sort of wraps around the diff casing. It needs these two holes on the gearbox diff casing. They need to be uh, threaded so that you can actually bolt this bracket up. On this O2A, those holes are not yet threaded. But on this O2A box that I'm going to be using, you can see that the holes are threaded and that was done when I had the box rebuilt. And then that means I'll be able to get this mount exactly where it needs to sit because just now it's pushing just slightly past where it'll actually sit. And that might mean that things are just a few mil off. So yeah, let's get the grill off. That should give us some more room here. And then we'll start to disconnect the drive shafts and stuff. And then we should be able to lift the engine in the box out quite easily. We'll get the exhaust manifold off separately as well, obviously. And then We'll try swap that box out and see if we can get it back in. Okay, so that's the engine out without too much dramas. So next thing I'm gonna do is whip this gearbox off. We'll get that out the out of the road. We'll transfer over the starter motor and the, the various mounts. And uh, we'll get the other gearbox on. And then while the engine bay is empty with the engine out, I'm just gonna give all of this a bit of a clean up. There's quite a lot of dust everywhere just from where it's been sitting. I might even whip off this cross member and just clean that up and give it a paint with some primer as well just to stop it from rusting as it sits.
So that's the gearbox now separated from the engine. So this is the old one here. This is the one I'm going to be running. It has the LSD in it. So I just need to transfer all the mounts and stuff over onto this one. I've also took out the, the brace from underneath just to clean that up. And I put a bit of epoxy primer on that just to protect it. And whilst I've got all this space in here, I've also swapped out the steering rack. So this is the one that was on the car. And the reason I've took this off is because it still has all the little brackets and stuff for the original rod gear linkage setup. So I've swapped it for another steering rack that I have where I've already chopped all of that stuff off. And what that means is it just gives that exhaust manifold a little bit more space in here to sit where it needs to be. That's the engine in the box back in now. I've also got the exhaust manifold back on. So currently the engine is just suspended on this mount and this one here, which means it has movement like that. So now I can really fine tune that rear mount such that the exhaust manifold is sitting nicely and it's not gonna bind up against the chassis or anything. And once we've sorted that mount out, we can just make a simple one to bolt up to this front mount coming off of this cross member. So looking at it from underneath, obviously this is the exit of the exhaust manifold. So the engine has this movement here. If it goes up too high, then the manifold catches on the chassis. But if it runs too low, then it's gonna catch on the cross member. So I'm just going to have to try and get it somewhere bang in the middle where it sits quite nice. Now the other thing I might do is get rid of this big flange and run a V-band instead. And that should be a bit more neat and tidy as well. It's just another view of the gap that I've got here. So it should fit quite nice if I get it somewhere in the middle around about here. And as for the rear mount itself, obviously I've got this big rubber bush here. And then I've got, this is the original plate that would mount obviously to that bush. And then it would mount onto these points here. So I'll see if I can use that. But if it's not sitting right, then it should be fairly straightforward just to modify this. Such that everything sits right. So first things first, I've fitted up the mount how it's intended to be so we've got the big steel bracket on the diff casing and then i've got the rubber block sandwiched in between and then the original plate at the back but as you can see there's quite a gap here between that original plate and this mount is also under quite a bit of strain in here as well so there's basically not a chance that I'd be able to get the nut onto there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try reshape this plate slightly to suit. So a little bit of progress now. So I've ended up chopping the original mount 
into two pieces and then I've kind of separated them height wise obviously and I've put this little sandwich plate in between and everything is kind of tacked together and bolted up it's not the easiest thing to film because of this brace but I've got plenty of space between the frame and the end of the exhaust manifold. I think I'm going to maybe chop down this corner a bit because it sits quite close to the frame. It's also quite tricky to actually mount. This mount, you can see I was kind of scratching up against the frame. But the mount's not under any stress anymore. And uh, yeah, the engine's nice and solid, even with it just tacked together. So I think I'm going to take this off again. I'm going to shave this edge down a bit. And then I'm also going to brace up in here with a little plate. And then I'll just fully weld everything up. And then we should be good to go. So that's my little custom gearbox mount, fully welded up now. Cleaned it up a bit as well. Just going to slap a bit of epoxy primer on it and then we'll get it mounted up. So that's the rear mount now fitted up and done and dusted for now. So now we've got one, two, three mounts fitted. We just need to make up a simple one up front. So like I say, I'm running an Epitech heavy duty front mount here and then I've just made up a couple of plates that will come off of this front cross member bar so I'm going to weld those in in position or at least tack them in for now I'm then probably going to plate this up a bit just to give it a bit more strength so I'll put a plate over the top here and then I'll also brace it along the sides on both sides and then we should have the engine fully in place Okay, so I've just finished the first part of the bracing on that front mount now. So obviously I had my two lugs and I've now just welded in just a bit of plate on both the top and the bottom and it's got a nice big swaged hole on there as well. So that should be nice and strong. Same on the bottom side. And obviously I've only done it up to here so that there's plenty of space still to slip this mount on. I've kept the mount on while I've welded it up as well, just to prevent these bits from warping. I've made sure I've not burnt the rubber bush as well, so it seems okay. So the last thing I think I'm going to do just to make sure it's super strong is just a little bit of triangulation from here to here and same at that side. And then we should be done with this front mount. That's the front mount all braced up now. So it should be nice and strong. So we're gonna throw it back in the car now and just make sure that everything still fits. So that is that. We've got the engine now mounted on all four mounts. It's sitting exactly where I want it to be. And everything's got nice clearance around the exhaust manifold. And we're ready for the next stage. So that's it for this one. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much for watching. In the next one, we're just gonna start building up the engine a bit more, refit the drive shafts, 
we'll start to think about the wiring and stuff and the gear shifter and just see what we need to do to get this car up running and driving please subscribe to the channel if you've not already and as always thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one cheers